give you praise. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Because someone say, this, for, this is the work of the Holy Ghost. Lifting up the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, I hear the Lord say to you, I did not say that I'm not going to do it. I said it will be done next week. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you. Can someone say, Lord, we thank you. And we give you praise. Would you open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 15 from verse 1 to 2. Let's read. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lended out unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Someone said the Lord's release. So in the Bible, there's something called the Lord's release. Tell your neighbor, you better enter into the Lord's release and stay there. Amen. But look at Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 9. It says, Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is a hand, and thy eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him not. And he cried unto the Lord against thee, and it be seen unto thee. Someone say, There's something called the Lord's release, then there's something called the year of release. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I enter into my year of release. Amen. Now, would you go to the book of John, chapter 19, from verse 10 to 11. Father, we give you praise. It says, Then say a pilot unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest, somebody come on, Thou couldest have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee had the greater sin. Somebody ought to say, Nothing shall hold back my blessing because God has said it is my year of divine release. Amen. So there's the law's release, there's the year of release, then there's the power to release. But our text for this sermon is going to come from 2 Kings chapter 4. The book of 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 29 to 36. Somebody bless the Lord. Amen. Then he reads, Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thy hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. Oh, somebody, I'm sure you're used to that. Amen. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told them, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth, someone say, put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned 
and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Somebody said, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. It's him. <laughs> Our title is Expelling the Seven Blessing Blockers. Expelling the Seven Blessing Blockers. You see, when you sneeze, you get rid of things in you that were not supposed to be in you. You see, the Lord, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 3 that God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. If we have the blessing and it's not a manifestation, there are blockers. Number seven is the number for completion. So the sneeze cannot be one time sneeze. It's got to be seven sneezes because God is doing a complete work in the life of someone that is hearing the sound of my voice. The Lord is not going to let you get a good job and not fix your marriage. The Lord is not going to let you get a good job, fix your marriage and not fix your children. The Lord is saying, I don't want to do healing. I want to do wholeness. I want to give you the whole package. Somebody bless the Lord. Are you hearing this? Are you ready for this? This expelling the seven blessing blockers. Here is the first blessing blocker that must be, must be sneezed out. Must be expelled. Are you ready? Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 4 to 6. Somebody bless the Lord. You read, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Someone say, one body, one spirit, and one hope. Look at verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who's above all, and through all, and in all. Somebody wait a minute. Why all these ones? You remember when the prophet sent Gehazi, Elisha sent Gehazi with his staff. Which is, the staff is the emblem of his call. The emblem of his authority. The staff should have worked. But the staff did not work because the man of God thought that Gehazi was with him in spirit. Gehazi was with him in the natural, but he wasn't with him in the spirit. You see, the first thing that's got to be expelled from our lives, if you're going to get the breakthrough, the blessing that God promised you is disunity between you and God. And disunity, someone said, disunity has to be fixed. So you may play church, but God knows when your heart is not there. And when your heart is there. And when your heart is not in line with what he wants to do, you can't get him to bless you because he cannot bless anybody he cannot control. Somebody bless the Lord. Are you hearing this? Now watch this. Gehazi went with the staff, could not produce the result. So the man of God came and tapped into the problem and laid upon the child his mouth to the child's mouth his nose to the child's nose, his eyes to the child's eyes, his hands to his hands, his feet to his feet, belly to belly, because the man of God knew this unity, something was cutting off the fire that God has put on the staff with the child. You see, there could be no resurrection, there could be no manifestation of a breakthrough without in being congruity without cohesiveness without oneness for God is one 
So the man of God, instead of asking Gehazi why didn't it work, the man of God went and fixed it. He laid upon the child and got himself in unity with the will of God for the child. And the Lord said, here's the first thing that you must sneeze out of your, out of your body. Every disunity to the will of God for you, you must say, in the name of Jesus, anything in you that is contrary to what God wants you to be, in the name of Jesus, anything that is different from what God wants me to have, that I have, expel, get rid of it. If you don't get rid of it, it will stop you from being what God wants you to be. You can't fight all the time and get the blessing that God wants you to have. So the Lord said, you need to say to fighting, it's a, I get rid of you. If I don't get rid of you, you will get rid of my blessing. Expelling the seven blessing blockers. Now, here's the second thing that must be expelled. Because it wasn't enough for the child to sneeze one time. He had to sneeze seven times. It's the second thing to expel. Are you ready? Let's go to the book of First John, chapter 2, from verse 14 to 17. Father, we give you praise. He says... I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. There are levels in Christianity. Somebody bless the Lord. Then it begins from verse 15. He says, love not the world, neither the things, read with me please, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I hear the Lord say, in order for you and I to possess the blessing that is from God, we must, we must expel the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. Now watch this. The pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes are the things that the devil uses in ruling and manipulating the soul of a man. Remember this. Okay, Father. Well, God will give you praise. God will give you praise. God will give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you glory. We give you glory. Amen. He wants us to give him praise. Amen. Watch this. When God made Adam and Eve, they never discussed anything about being naked. They never discussed anything about being afraid until the devil came in and deceived them. In fact, the Bible said that when the devil came, he came and opened their eyes. And if you remember, the eyes of them were opened in the natural because they could see. Their eyes were open in the spirit because they could relate to God spirit to spirit. But the eyes of their soul, their reasoning was protected. But the devil came and taught them how to reason with their five senses. So he opened the eyes of their logic. And once the eyes of their logic is opened, he gave them these three things. The pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. So now, man is preoccupied with who will provide for me, what am I going to eat, and who will protect me. 
Okay? These are what man is preoccupied with. In exchange for who will provide for me, who will I eat, who will protect me, God says, trust in the Lord. So what the enemy has done is, he gave man worry and took trust from man. He did an exchange. Okay? So what happens now is, as long as pride rules what you do, you block your blessing. As long as lust of the eyes, whatever you see you want to have, rules your life, you block your blessing. As long as lust of the flesh rules you, you block your blessing. Now, how do you know? I hear the Lord say, there are, only, there are only two things that God does to deliver us from the three things that the world offers. You know what he does? One, he allows us to suffer. <laughs> you see, because by suffering, we learn to trust. That's two of the things he does. Number one, he allows you to suffer. So you go and, and you start chasing after all those material things. You're working 10 jobs. You're stressed out. Because the root word for suffering is really the denial of their what? Of your things to eat, things to wear, and who will protect you. Check out all your sufferings. Predominantly, many people are suffering right now financially. Because of their lack of trust in God. Because they're moving by their five senses, they're operating on who will protect me. What will I eat? What will I wear? And the second thing God does to deliver man from suffering is God will put someone over you that's supposed to watch after your soul. If you listen to them, the word of God they teach, you get yourself delivered. But if you don't listen, you keep suffering until you choose to listen. Oh, somebody bless the Lord. So the Lord is saying, you got to understand that as long as you're worldly, you will block what I want to give you. You can't be jealous all the time and get blessed at the same time. So the Lord said, for the pride of life, for the lust of the flesh, for the lust of the eyes, say, Excel. Excel. Expel it. Expel. Expel them. Because they are blessing blockers. Here's the third blessing blocker real quickly. Psalms 140 verse 11. The third blessing blocker says, let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. The Lord said, any time you speak what you see, what you feel, how it is, you dethrone yourself from being established. You see, what happens is, when you say what the devil says, you establish what the devil wants. But when you say what God said, you are establishing what God wants over your life. But sometimes people twist it. They say, well, if I say what God said without seeing it, I'm lying. But you're forgetting that the Bible says in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. And you're not, you not speak God's word because God's word has creative power. You don't speak it because you see it. You speak it because you want to use it to change your situation that you do see. But the devil moves in the sense realm. So he can easily show you what happened before and move and manipulate your emotions and feelings. But God says in the midst of it, just stand and say, it is written. When the thought of fear comes upon you, say, for God has not given him the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. When someone is threatening to kill you, to stand and say, for no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Don't talk about the weapon, just speak the word, because Psalms 103 verse 20 says that the angels of God excel in strength, hearkening to the voice. You see, the word, someone said, the word is here. 
then I've got to put a voice to the word and the angels will take it and run with it. Do you get it? The word has been given to you. Now put your voice to the word and let the angels run for you. Somebody say, give God something to work with. So the Lord said, if you want to break through, you have to sneeze out all the negative words. You have to expel them from your system. The seven blessing blockers. Here's the fourth blessing blocker. But you've got to get rid of. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24. Somebody say, God, I give you praise in this house. It says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The Lord makes it clear. If you're lazy, you're going to be broke. It's not because God doesn't love you. It's just because when God made man, the first thing he made was put him to work. That's why with all due respect, it is, little, it's, it is unimag- it's, uh, unimaginable for a woman that has a good job to go and look for a man that's lazy and put him up in a house, paying all his bills. Something has got to be wrong with you because there's no way it can work because it's contrary to the law to the principles that God has set in place. He said only the diligence. The, 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 the simplest definition for diligence is consistent. Only those that are consistent. You see, you say, well, I come to church, but the Lord said, you come to church all the time, but it's the church in you. If the church is not in you yet, if you can come to the church and go out and do your own thing and don't care about the God of the church, then you're not in church yet. The hand of the diligent shall rule. So if there's laziness in you, procrastination in you, putting things off, somebody expel, sneeze it out. In the name of clear your head, sneeze it out of you. In the name of Jesus. Seven blessing blockers. One sneeze couldn't do it. Two sneeze couldn't do it. Three couldn't do it. Four couldn't do it. Because God has a number of perfection. He's the fifth blessing blocker. Somebody bless the Lord. If you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 13 verse 12. Somebody bless the Lord. It says, and behold, God himself is with us. For our captain and his priest with sounding trumpets. To cry alarm against you, O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. When you fight against the will of God. Sometimes some people say, well, I don't fight against the will of God. They'll say, well, well, let me tell you something. Something as little as Romans chapter 13, verse 1, of, from verse 1 to 7. The Lord said, look, at your job, I place your supervisor there. Your supervisor is not the right kind of color that you want. Not the right kind of size that you want. It's not friendly to you. Doesn't do everything you want. They seem to want to do their own thing. And you're speaking against your supervisor. The Lord said, your supervisor, though Cyrus was a heathen, but he was an instrument in the hand of God. You see, my supervisor always complains whenever I'm late. They're writing me up. The Lord said, I've got to give you that kind of supervisor because he is like a sharp instrument that I'm using him to chisel away bad habits in your life. You say, well, I'd rather have a supervisor that I get along with. The Lord said, I didn't put the supervisor to be your friend. That's something you don't understand. God will never give you a pastor that's going to be your friend. He's going to give you a pastor, though they're friendly with you, but sometimes they're going to say things that will cause you to butt heads. Because God cannot have a pastor that's scared of you to pastor you. Otherwise, he's going to lead you astray. So the Lord said, if you're challenging authority, you're challenging me. And it's going to affect your wallet. Because I can't bless you when you have your own vision that's different from the vision I have for my house. 
He said, well, I'll obey God. I just can't put up with that woman. The Lord said, I'm not going to put up with it. Because how can you say you love God whom you don't see when you don't love a man whom he made in his image that you do see? So the Lord said, that Christianity is from your own wrong ideology. So what should I do? The Lord said, just humble yourself and pray for your supervisor. The moment you start praying for your supervisor, before you know it, you start developing love. Not kind of wrong love now. Hey, hello. You start developing compassion. And then God begins to explain to you some of the things that your supervisor is doing that you don't understand. You see, how many of you, when you have a teenage, a teenage child in your house, the teenager always thinks that they know more than you. They always say, oh, you don't know this, you don't know this. They're like, oh my goodness. Same thing in ministry. A lot of people in church will always believe they know more than their pastor. But they forgot that you cannot be a pastor without being a church member. You can't be a supervisor without first being an employee. So there's some things they know that you don't know. So but when you start working with them, God will open your eyes. You say, oh, this is why he's doing it this way. Oh, this is why she wants it done this way. I remember a friend of ours, when he was starting his ministry, he came to me with a list of all the things he was going to do. I tried to tell him he wouldn't listen to me. So I said to him, you know what? I'm not going to tell you anymore. I'm just going to leave you alone until you start. It was after he started a while that he came back to me in tears. He said, now I'm ready to listen. Tell God, if you will say you're starting a ministry and you know where everything is going to be, God didn't call you. Because God does ministry is not business. You will not know where anything is going to come from because everything comes by faith and by looking up to Him. If you think this nice lady here is going to bring that for you, you are joking because she won't. God will let you know who's who. The only person He wants you to trust is Him. So if you can figure everything out, you are not walking in His will. Somebody bless the Lord. So the Lord says, don't fight against those that are put over you. Work with them. So if there's inside of you this, this contentious or this contrariness that is difficult for you to walk in unity, somebody say, I expel it from me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you still ready? Watch this. Blessing blocker number what? Six. Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs 28, 13. It says, he that covered his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Child of God is simple. Watch this. Demons love to live in humans. You understand? And they love to use the faculty of humans to function. They love to use the hand of humans to go and throw bombs. They love to use the feet of humans to go and do mischief. They love to use the mouth of humans to do damage, to say very hurtful emotional words. You say, why are you saying that? The, the demon, they've yielded to Romans 6.16 that is making them do what they do. That's why 2 Corinthians 5.16 says, no, no one after the flesh, but after the spirit. As 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 says that the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So you're not fighting an ordinary fight. He's not the one that is saying that to you. It's the spirit behind him or her that's saying that to you. Do you get it? So the Lord said, listen now. If you refuse to confess your sin, there's a demon that comes inside of you. He lives there. And he will simply be living on his agenda through you. That's why the moment you confess your sin, you evict the devil from your house. Because your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot play with not confessing. You, you got to confess your sin. Because when you confess it, the devil's power over you is broken. 
Because at the cross, Jesus paid for our sins. In the name of Jesus. So the Lord said, any sin that you refuse to confess is the sin that I will not cover. Something else, do you know that if you're in church and the service is going on and you're texting, you know you're sinning against God? <laughs> you're telling him, God, you're not important. My texting is more important than you. It's like a child, you're talking to your child and the child is like, their eyes somewhere say, yes, yes. If you're a good parent, you're going to give him a little smack. A kind smack. <laughs> to get their attention. Child of God, any sin we refuse to confess is the sin that the devil will use to hold us down. So let's say this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, search my heart. Every rebellion, every disunity, every sin, particularly those that I enjoy. Father, I confess them. Father, remove them from me in the name of Jesus. Every weakness in me Father God, uproot. And Father, wash me with hyssop and make me whiter than snow. In Jesus' name, for every sin in my life, as him, a spell. Amen. This is the seventh blocker. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. This is subtle, but we got to pay attention to it. Watch this. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Please, right there. Child of God, many of us, you and I, are quite unthankful to the Lord. In fact, the Bible says that statistics for humans being thankful is 10 to 1. Because Jesus healed Ten lepers, and only one came back to say thank you. Child of God, if I say now we're going to have a Thanksgiving service, many people are going to sit back on their seat. Like, I don't feel like getting up. But if we say, come for your prayer request, a bunch of people are going to come up for their prayer request. Child of God, it's time to change that. Because God doesn't owe me anything. And imagine, he's given us oxygen. He's done so much for you and I. And we're there being ignorant. And say, well, he didn't answer this little bitty prayer request. Because he didn't answer it. He's no longer with us. Try to go, don't do that. Today, would you search your heart and say, Heavenly Father, every unthankfulness in me. Father, I expel them out of my life. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I hear the Lord say, I have given you the ingredients. Now, go home and mix it with faith. Amen. Praise God.